So um, we run nine to one, five days a week in the main program. Um, this allows us not to be registered as a school because quite clearly we're not. We don't have classrooms. Uh, the curriculum is is each person's their own. Um, and uh, unlike a school, it was interesting talking to. Well, we I interviewed some of the young people for a, um, a piece in a book they wanted to know about. So they said, "Well, what about the views of the young people?" Which is quite right. And one of them said, "Well, it's just great that you know we go through them. What we come in in the morning between eight thirty and nine, make ourselves tea and coffee, whatever. There's a kitchen that's open. It's just there for people to go to any time." And that was one of the things that some of the students said was really nice, you know, they didn't, you know, if they're feeling thirsty, and just go and get a drink, they don't have to wait, you know, if they feel like going to the toilet, they go to the toilet, it's not, it's not putting their hands up in a class to go and do things. And that was, it was kind of important symbolically, I think, for children who come through a school system to know that, you know, they're in charge of their own lives, just as they are in the home, where at home you can say, I need to go to the toilet, you mum and dad, and you go to the toilet, or you have, have, a, have a drink of water, you know, you get, so why is schools, you know, have, anyway, so they like that and, and, and the notion that um, they can create their own lives and their own curriculum. So, so, when they f so when they move off from the morning meeting, they're moving off into doing the things they want to do. Sometimes they'll have signed up to, to uh, going to, uh, on a trip or um, joining in a group, a project group. Uh, they may have been a uh, meeting with one of the adults um, to provide some tuition for them. Uh, that could be somebody who's paid to be there, but it could be volunteers, since we have people from the music school and uh, from the universe, local universities coming and doing things. So, um, or we, we bring people in, you know, there's, there's often visitors who come in and do things because the students are interested in something. Um, uh, like I mentioned the example of a girl wanting to be, to act, and she said, well maybe I'd like to, maybe I could make cakes for a living, you know, so we invite, so I phone up the person who's the sort of ace local cake maker who's great at decorating cakes, and she came in and, with her kit and showed them how to, to, to make floral decorations with icing, and showed them how to make gluten-free brownies, because she said that's in demand, so you've got to know how to do gluten-free these days, and um, and uh, and no cost because she's just you know it's happy to to provide that because she's good at it and often people are good at things quite like sharing that with other people and other students just joined in I mean it wasn't just for that girl who was interested again students can join in with others on things they don't it's not all it's not individualistically oriented in that sense um, and finish the morning with another meeting you know just wrapping up anything that's happened. Um, obviously things can happen amongst, especially amongst teenagers, you know, where hormones are running and people, you know, can have issues with each other and it's really in, within the community we have structures where we work through those issues and try and help them to learn to deal with those issues because that's what you have to do in adult life, in families, in communities, at work, you know, you have to learn to get on with people and get, around, get and try and solve problems that occur. Um, and so, they learn a lot by doing that. I learn a lot by uh, meetings. The meetings are chaired in rotation. So it could be a nine-year-old chair in a meeting. It could be one of the adults. And you learn it by doing it. So you know, often there's people will say, well, you know, if they're learning to work together, shouldn't you have interpersonal skills courses? And we go, no, well, you learn this by doing it. This is, this is how communities work. Um, and actually, if you do artificial role plays and simulations, there's not a lot of evidence to say that they do work in terms of transferring that into real life. It is much more important that you do things in real life and dealing with it, than deal with it for real. Um, so that would be a, a fairly typical day, you know, where different things will be happening in different rooms. Uh, there might be music going on in the music room. Even if the music tutor's not in, individuals can book the music room and just go in there and play around and we encourage people. We've had a number of students who just never really thought they could do music stuff but would go in and maybe press a, mess around on the drums and then they might you know, tinkle a bit on the piano and then realise, hey, you, know, you can actually make music and then starting to learn to do it properly. Um, as they wish and some will choose to go on 
quite high level in, in music and others it's just a nice little hobby you know? people choose the, the level they want to work at um, or doing art again this you know we have an art tutorial at certain times but people could do art stuff at other times you know they they feel like doing some drawing they can go draw you know or go paint they want to paint you know it's fine um, um, but it, it, the most important thing is every Friday where the learning groups are the place where people write answer the five questions but as they go through the year it is actually then reviewing that how are they doing on those things um, so reviewing or what each student reviewing what they've done during the week in terms of the different things that they plan to do and quite often of course they don't work out what they planned and that's sort of important learning and it's okay you know it's not to to criticize somebody but to say okay what did you learn from the fact that you wanted to learn that and it didn't work out um, what might you do in the coming week uh, what different could you do that, that if, if it's not maybe not a lot of point in trying to do the same and it not working out again <coughs> could there be another way of addressing that so so each Friday that review of the week and planning for the next week is really important and again you know people learn how to plan because that's what is necessary when you go into work if, you know unless it's very mechanized which those jobs are disappearing because of robots etc um, people going to what you have to think about well what are, you know having a to-do list or whatever you know how do I how do I actually do the stuff that that I want to do and how do I separate out the urgent from the important and things like that um, so that that's a lot of the stuff about making the week work In terms of the um, arrangements with the college, it's part of the Centre for Salmage Learning, which is an educational charity and a company limited by guarantee. <coughs> the, the college is inspected by uh, the local county council for all the usual things in terms of health and safety and our protection and safeguarding and those kind of things. So that we, but we're not a school. Uh, we we get money from the, the company that I chair. We've, had money from the local council for, uh, for two or three years because there was a government scheme that they could use. Um, but the local politicians then, the, the government changed the, the structure of the scheme and that allowed the local politicians to decide they didn't want to continue to fund us despite a big campaign. Which was quite a shame because obviously a number of, although we had a bursary scheme that kept going for some parents for a while but they've had to uh, leave because we now do have to charge fees to two parents I and mean, it's heavily subsidized because we've got three paid staff on every morning for 19 students and that's 1,300 pounds a term 3,900 pounds a year uh, the local authority gets just over 5,000 pounds per secondary pupil um, so when we ask schools to pay it is actually less than the local authority is getting uh, per child you know so that they can make a bit of a profit out of it in a way that they always recognize that um, so schools will send people to us because they see that we're more appropriate environment um, for individuals than the school and then, and, and that's uh, so when the council withdrew the funding or at least decided not to use when the change of scheme came about decided not to allocate money from that new scheme to us they did minute the fact that it was you know schools had the right of course because there was no they weren't commenting on the quality of our work they were they were deciding in terms of the priorities of their money and that that and that therefore schools were perfectly entitled of course to send people to us and pay out of the money that they get because each school gets uh, so much per pupil for attendance um, and we do fundraise and, and we do find ways of not paying people by, by um, asking them to do stuff for free and things like that or finding ways of dealing with things uh, because it is important that we're financially viable and of course with the kids company going bust you know um, it is uh, you know we, we, we have to be absolutely squeaky clean and the charity has been going now for um, let's say at least 20 years and uh, always been in the black and I think that's what we want to stay that way so you know, unfortunately we do have to get money from parents uh, which we do insist on them paying 
actually. Mm. <laughs> uh, and we're not, you know, you're not allowed to have no child is present with us unless they're paid either by the school or by the, 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 the parents. And th that's a bit tough. But the other option is that we don't exist. You know, it's either either we exist and charge money, or we don't exist. And we're very clear that we will, uh, and we will continue to grow slightly in order to be able to uh, progress. The, the college and it's an onwards and upwards. You know, we're, we're this is this is uh, the beginning of something. You know, we see this as a model that other people want to pick up, and we get people around the UK and abroad wanting you know our services to help them to learn how to do this kind of work because they're seeing that's what is desirable. Um, and we've worked in lots of other countries from uh, Australia and Canada, uh, Sweden, Finland, Puerto Rico. Uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, where people are really keen to that and we have visitors from all over the world um, in the last year from Chile from South Korea from Greece from Hungary you know we have people coming to to learn mm. from us um, because so it's very important that we remain a stable secure uh, organization run on a business like way uh, and not some flaky operation, because this has been a problem sometimes with alternative education that is not business-like. And one advantage I've got with a business background is <laughs> and how to make things business-like. And that's a bit tough sometimes, because not everybody wants to to see it in those terms and thinks that you know we should just take everybody whether we they can pay or not, and, or not to have lots of people. And we go, well, no, you know, it's, uh, we have to run it properly um, yeah. because we have to ensure the future for what we're doing. Absolutely, and there are a couple of examples of local alternative providers in Brighton that have either had to stop stop existing. So there was the Adventure Company, Adventure Unlimited, and Adventure uh, Unlimited. Uh, Access to Music. Yes, both both ceased in this this uh, this summer. Yeah, mm. which is I think really terribly sad. Um, so we're not going to do that. We are going to be financially viable, and as chair of governors, I'm making certain we do that. Um, even though it's you know not always popular to say we've got to get money and we've got, we've got to have numbers um, and we do want to help other people you know we're not trying to um, empire build you know because we do get people say well come and set something up in our area and we go no no we'll help you to learn how to do it you know because that's the way forward and um, not us coming and doing other stuff or being a, you know, empire building and and also you have to develop your own model in your own context, you know, and we need to support that, you know. It's a whole different world, ball game, say, working in an affluent country like Canada or Sweden. It is from, say, in a poor country like Puerto Rico, you know, you, you, you have to adjust. Uh, the principles stay the same, but the design of programs has to modify to suit the context. Mm.